Yeah. And that's basically what God wants you to understand that He has purpose for your life, and He and you have uh, He has an inheritance for you. We're going we're going to talk about that and explain that just a little bit, okay? All right, Jeremiah chapter twenty nine, and verse ten. For thus said the Lord, and I won't I won't spend a lot of time on this because I I shared it last week, but just a little a little, a little review. For thus said the Lord that after seven years I accomplish in Babylon. I, God, will visit you, and I will perform my good work towards you, and causing you to return to this place. This is the time with seven years of captivity. Uh, they they had uh, arrived in the promised land. Since while their, their body was in the promised land, the heart was in the world, so seven years of captivity. They're being chastised for seven years in Babylon, which is the type of the world. And then God says, Okay, that I'm gonna, I'm a, I will visit you after seven years. I will visit you. I'll perform my good word to you, and I will cause you to return to this place. The word "return" that means I will refresh you. I will recall you. I will restore you. I will recover you. I will God. rescue you. I will bring you back. Thank you. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. If you understand this thing right here, that that consequences of sin are God's dealing. Okay, there are consequences. God will warn us not to sin, but the, uh, it's consequences that come. That basically, the revealing is that God dealing is just dealing is not to keep you out. His dealing is to bring you in. Amen. Okay, there may be a season, a time of chastisement, is because what the path that you're on is destructive. It will bring death. It will actually take you to hell. You miss your inheritance. You miss your destiny. You miss you miss your purpose. You never understand it. how big God is and His love for you. <laughs> Okay, so then the chastisement begins to wake up uh, so we come into alignment. Okay, so then God says, I know the thoughts that I think toward you. The reason he said that, because a lot of people don't know that God is loved and that God loves them, and he already has a plan for them, okay? Thoughts of peace are not of evil to give me the expected end. Then you shall call upon me, you shall go and you shall pray to me, and I, God, will hearken unto you. You shall seek me, you shall find me when... You're searching me with all of your heart. Now, if there's anything that we want to say from the pulpit, and one of the, one of the main things we want to say over and over again, you have it, one, because we put our body in the church service, we got to get the kingdom of God established within us. And tell us in the heart, tell our mind, we come to the house of God to get something we can take home. We take it home to our marriage, we take it home to our children, we take it home to our family, we take it home to our job, we take it home to our school, we take it everywhere we go. The kingdom of God so powerfully established within you. Okay, so you shall seek me. I may want to, I may, I may want to find God. I may want more God. Yeah. You'll find Him when you search. When I search, with all of my heart, soul, strength, and mind. Yeah. And I will be found of you, said the Lord, that will turn away your captivity. Any bondage, any chains that you got, God will break them. And I will gather you from all nations, from all the places that I have driven you, said the Lord, that will bring you again to the place. I'll bring you right back into the land you got exiled from. That's what, yes. Okay, I'll bring you right back to the very place that I cause you to be carried away of. Now, that is a beautiful picture of restoration. Yes. That is a picture of resurrection. Restoration and resurrection, yes. okay? They're very powerful. So what God's saying, okay, you may, you're may you losing a little time here and, and getting your purpose and your destiny and your inheritance. I'm going to bring you back to the place, and uh, I'm going to turn away your captivity. I'm going to get you right back in line with your destiny and God's purpose for your, for your life. Okay, let's turn to... Uh, uh, Philippians, just real quick, I shared this last week, but I'm, this is very important. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 said, Brethren, I do not come myself to apprehend it, but one thing I do, I forget that which is behind. Amen. You've got to get away from condemnation, from yes. guilt, from Amen. shame, disgrace, from things that happen. So Paul the Apostle said, one thing, one thing I do, I forget those things that are behind and yes. reaching forth that the things are before. Now look right here just a minute. Now, the key right here is that the reaching forth, you forget the path. So I, I say this over and over again, that God will give you a word, and your God will invade your presence, and He'll give you a word. Then He stands back and see who comes to alignment with the assignment. Well, so what, what He's saying about this is that reaching forth is that He doesn't want us to be spectators. Yeah. We have but one because we heard what to do. We must hear what the Spirit say, and then we must do. Okay, so that's what the young people are hearing, that there's purpose, that there's destiny, there's an inheritance, and you have to reach forth, you have to reach yes. forth, you have to have, we got to come out of passivity, yes. and we got to get passionate for the yes. thing of God, and we don't want to hear about, 
uh, historical deed, then we would be desperate for God in the now. Amen. And all the things that God said, we can turn the same. So forgetting those things that are behind, reaching forth to those things that, that are before. And that press toward the, the mark of the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Okay, now let's go to our main text today, and that would be Acts 26, which is one of my favorite uh, things. And, and prophetically speaking, you heard the young people uh, preaching about it, you heard them prophesying about it. And yeah. we're going to, this is where I got my, I, this text right here is where I got my title today Purpose and Inheritance. I've been, been want to know, a big, a big ministry is what that, that have television ministry. Many of them will say the number one call that they get to the ministry is people trying to find their purpose. They want to know what is my purpose for life. Okay, so today we're talking about purpose, we're talking about inheritance. Okay, how many how many want to know what your inheritance is, and how many want to obtain God's inheritance for you? Okay, now what the young people are hearing is that that God has something in store for them, and they've heard that word, and they're being, they've heard the assignment, and now they're coming to alignment with the assignment, and they're becoming so alive because now what has happened? They got vision. Without a vision, the people perish. Okay, so vision will will put a a hop in yourself, the inner, the vision will put energy in you, and you come to, you read your Bible, you pray, every day you have a spirit of expectation, what will God do for me today? Yeah. So we come, we can't wait to, to pray, we can't wait to pray, yeah. we can't wait to worship, we can't wait for the Word to be preached, we can't wait to hear what the Spirit of God is saying in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, so today, the confirmation comes to the young people, they're talking about purpose, they're talking about Him, they're prophesying about it, and then, uh, Acts 26, this is where Paul, in Acts chapter 9, Paul has this visitation of the Lord, and he, he had been uh, well, he'd been persecuting and killing Christians, and so he's, uh, he's telling the story now in chapter 26, and we begin at verse 9. Verse 9, I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Uh, that's how we were before Christ. Which thing I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints that I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests, chief priests, and that's something, received authority from the chief priests, and when they were put to death, when they were put to death, I gave I gave my voice against them, saying, that's right, kill him. Say he put he put believers in prison, he's put them in prison, and he's having them killed. Now look right here, just a minute. Because this is very important that we understand that this gets in your spirit, man. When earlier, when in Philippians chapter three, Paul said, "By the Spirit of God, forgetting my past." Now, Paul had a past, and he put Christians in prison and killed believers. Yes. You and I may have done a little bit of sin, but we've not done that. Amen. So what I'm telling you, Paul said, the important thing. And that you've got to understand the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes. That God doesn't remember your sins anymore. Yes. You have been washed and been forgiven. Yes. So we've got to yes. let go of the past. Yes. We've got to bring the present to give you future. Yes. You've got to yes. break all chains of your past. Yes. You've got to let the past go. Amen. Yes. Well, yes. See, we've given enough time to the devil. Yes. So don't be chained or bound to your past anymore. Yes. Be careful having be careful having a, a what other people call a horrible past. Because if you've got a horrible past... God will give you a bigger future. Yes. 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 That God doesn't even remember. Amen. The more hurt you experience in the past, the more healing you have for the future. God just may give you tremendous healing ministry. Sure, that they, they, they understand. Paul had a past. Amen. Yes, I did. I've done a few things, but I didn't kill anybody. Amen. You don't take no God. Amen. Yes, I did. Okay, so uh, <laughs> verse 11, and I punished them up to then every synagogue, and I compelled them. To, I, I encouraged them to blaspheme. I tried to get them to blaspheme. Curse God. 
What is ISIS trying to do? Same thing. Amen. Being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even in the strange city. Whereupon one day, just like any other day, I'm on my way to Damascus and I have authority and commission from the chief priest. Amen. Yeah, the religious leader were ordaining me. Amen. Oh, wow. And I preached for a whole while right there. That's for sure. Amen. At midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun. Well, the brightness of the sun. I saw a light that was brighter than the sun, shining all round about me. And then that journey, you hear the young people talk about the journey. Yes. Now, young people understand there's a journey. Yes, there is. So that yes. gives your life meaning, purpose, and value. You have a destiny. You have inherited yes. that you will pursue. It doesn't just happen. You've got to reap for it. You've got to get desperate and hungry yes. for your future. Yes. 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 Okay, so they're on the journey. And when we were all fallen to the earth, so this light comes, the Spirit of God comes, and we all fell to the earth. Uh, wow. that you have to stop and think how God will deal. It says a very high educated man. Yeah. There's a high educated, a man of influence. This yeah. man had title, he had position, he has education, he has money. And God deals with him by knocking him to the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Be careful because God... The way up in the kingdom of God is down. Humble yes. yes. yourself yes. in the sight of God, and yes. He will. Exactly. So you have to be careful now. Be careful. Yeah. Be careful yeah. riding your high horse. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's true. <laughs> now here he is persecuting Christians. He's having them killed, and he's encouraging them. He's trying to manipulate them to blaspheme God. And then we get knocked to the ground, and he hears a voice. Uh -oh. She's a light. Awesome. It knocked to the ground. Now he hears a voice wow. in the Hebrew tongue saying, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It's hard for you to kick. It's hard for thee to kick against the bricks. And I said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I'm Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Amen. He's persecuting the body of Christ. And Jesus yeah. said, If you heard one, you heard them all. You heard God. Okay, so the people then that are coming against you, God feels your hurts and your wounds, and He feels your pain. Thank you, Lord. Now, Lord. very important that we understand. L listen, what the, listen what the Spirit of God is saying and bring this right where you are today. That, that God has that, uh, again, we'll say that God then, Jesus, comes to Paul. And Jesus is going to give Paul a word. And in this word, there's going to be an assignment. Yes. And let's see if Paul then comes into alignment with the assignment. And what we need to understand, that God knows exactly, and we're going to get to this later, God will know just to the, God, everybody that comes here will hear a word, and in the word there'll be an assignment. And that God will stand back and walk, who will come into alignment with the assignment that God will give us, okay? Yeah. Yes. Here's, here's a very important thing, Lord. okay, that, and, and you heard this in the young people today. Lord. We become very dangerous when we become comfortable, we come yeah. to church, and we hear what the Spirit is saying. Yeah. Today or any day, if you hear His voice, do that heart in your heart. As so they did the day, they provoke God to anger, departing from a living God because of the deceitfulness of sin. Yes. They did not enter in because of... I did. Now, wow. it, uh, now, let me ask you a question. Pastor Dan, do not answer this question. <laughs> we the draw sometimes. <laughs> the demons in people, what is their number one goal? Stay in the Bible. Stay in the Bible. To what? Stay in the Bible. Uh, stay in the Bible. How, how do the demons stay in people's body? Well, see, let's put it a little bit, Does give it a couple of ways. That, that people, the more demonized people are when they come to the house, you heard young people talk, I thank God for delivering. Uh, these signs are followed that they believe. Yeah. Uh, uh, probably Friday night, we yeah. opened up the little delivery section, about a hundred demons cast out. Amen. Friday That's night. Awesome. Now here's how here's how demons will work God. to remain in your body. They'll try to get someone that's very demon to question deliverance. Yeah. Yeah. I don't believe this is real. I don't believe this is real. They entered not in because of I, believe. Well, I don't believe. Yeah, right. I don't believe that I don't believe that other people just Amen. Over and over through the years we've had people come in and they hear a voice. Boy. Run. And it's the demonic one. The voice said, "Get up, run out of here. Yeah. That's a tough guy to go." Yeah. And just the demons number one go. Number one goes to. They need a body to express their. 
nature says, yes. so let's, uh, get, get out of here, don't, don't come back here. <laughs> or they say, oh, isn't that real? Because Satan wants to stay within your body because he wants to use yeah. your body. So he's telling you it's not real Amen. so he can feed your body and use you. Amen. That's right. That's right. That's, right. That's, That's for sure. sure. Yeah. So now, That's bad. What's, what's purpose? Boy. See, because there's some here that has grasped this. Yes. They understand this. This is all kind of, by the time that it's purpose and inheritance, and see, if you want to find purpose, God wants to give you purpose. Yes. And then the, the, we're talking about past present and future, yeah. that you're re forgetting the past yeah. and reaching forth, oh. and, and the way you reach forth is that when God invades your present to you oh. a future, when God gives you a word in the now, and in that word that He gives you, there's an assignment, and you're coming to life of the same, oh. when you say, yes, the process begins, Thank and the process so is thousands oh. of decisions that you had to make yeah. on the journey, right. which we call, uh, I also call the, the process and the journey is basically the same thing. Yes. So can we're looking at someone, we're looking at someone, uh, I was a sinner, but I didn't kill people. <laughs> I wouldn't manipulate people to blaspheme God. Amen. And I wouldn't put Christians in prison. And so God says, uh, we got a boy here that's got a problem, I will help him. Amen. Yes. To get his attention, he knocks him to the ground. Yes. Have you ever had, you ever had something happen, and if, if it had to happen, wow. God did something to get your attention. Yeah. 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 Because you're out of His purpose, yes. and He loves us even while we're mistreating the body of Christ yes. and mistreating yes. other people, and He still yes. loves you. I got to wake this boy up. Yes. Oh, how can I? Well, he's so educated. Let's loot him down in the dirt for a little bit. <laughs> Dirty water. So he, a light comes. He gets knocked to the ground, and he hears a voice. And the voice said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Saul, Saul said to you, who are you, Lord? I'm Jesus whom you are persecuting. Yes. Now listen to what Jesus said to him. Now remember, we've been talking about uh, a couple, we've had a couple of messages of apostolic prophetic ministry. You're going to see the, the uh, like a birthing here of apostolic ministry. You can very powerful right here. Okay, so God then said, Jesus said, rise and stand upon your feet. For I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. 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 I have appeared unto you for this purpose. So Saul oh. is out of alignment with God's purpose for his life. So he has to give him what I call a Holy Ghost slap. Amen. He pulls the rug up from under him because you're out of my purpose. So I'm going to help you get out of my alignment. I'm going to help you to get into alignment. Amen. So I have appeared to you for this. Purpose. Purpose. Amen. If God wants to give Saul and make him into a Paul, if he wants to give him purpose, does God want to give you purpose? Amen. The whole question is not will God speak? The, net, the whole question is not can God change our life? The Amen. question is do we want to give up our sin and idols yes. Yes. to find God's purpose because His yes. plan is higher than our plan? Yes, yes Lord. Hallelujah. Both of them talked about Glory. who will be in control. Right? Yes, that's right. That is. That's, well. Oh, man, when you look at me, ah, I don't want to think I don't want to get too close. I don't mind going to dentures because if I come to work where God can speak in there, the, those prophets oh. and apostles would deal with my life. They will begin to expose the darkness. Oh. God will try to give me out of darkness and give me to light. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I've appeared unto thee for this purpose. purpose. So someone without someone who is so out of alignment with God Have is killing been. Christians and putting them in prison and manipulating them, trying to get them to curse God and blaspheme. So God looks down, Jesus looked down and said, I'm going to wake this boy up. Amen. Thank you. And I want you to know, Saul, I've appeared to you for this. Purpose. I'm going to give you. Yeah, how many will find out what the purpose is? Yes. 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 It's right here in the text. I've appeared to you for this purpose to make you a minister. To make you a minister. Did you hear the young people say that when I cast something out of someone and I saw people's lives change, I wanted to do this oh, for the rest yeah. of my life? Yeah. 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 What did they do? What did they find? 
Purpose. Why did God appear to make you into a minister? minister. minister. Of God. Someone come in, see, spiritually blind, and God give them vision for their life. Thank so they're no longer wasting their time. They're now redeeming the time because now they got a purpose because God came to the present to give them a word that they come into alignment with, and now they're going somewhere. Now they got a hump in their step. Now they will not get distracted and disrupted by sin, by judgment, by loving the world, by loving sin, by loving pleasure, being more the lovers of God. Thank you, Jesus. I have a picture of this purpose to make you to minister. Secondly, to be witness of these things which I have seen. Uh, I'm a people watcher. <laughs> and people watch people that are really alive. Amen. Praise <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> God. Mine. It is possible. <laughs> See, people be your witness when they're not even trying to be a witness. Amen. Well, they're just so alive to God that they are witness. Amen. Because their light is so, so shining. Amen. See, what has happened, they've become into alignment. They heard the word, and they come to alignment. Now, Jesus is going to give so many words. I have appeared to you for this purpose to make you minister. To, to, as a witness of both of these things which you have seen, and those things in which I will appear to thee. Thirdly, I will deliver you, I deliver thee from the people and from the Gentiles. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Woo. Wow. Hallelujah. Anybody beside me ever been a slave to people's opinion? Yeah. 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 That's for sure. I'm going to yes. deliver you from yeah. the people. Yeah. Yes. Thank God. Yeah. Praise God. I'm going to deliver you from the Gentiles. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Who I will now send you to. Yes. yes. That's amazing. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes. From the Gentiles. Yes. I'm going to send you to the Gentiles. The Gentiles are not, not coming to people. I'm going to del deliver you from the people, from the Gentiles, whom I will now send you. Number four. So awesome. See, that, what's his purpose? So awesome. To open up their eyes. Hallelujah. Wow. Thank you. To open up their eyes. God said to me in uh, several years ago, in John chapter 5, there was many by the pool of swimming. They were lame. They were halt. They were blind. They were dead. They were dumb. They were, they were, they were impotent. God said, First of all, don't ever look at natural blindness or natural deafness or natural lameness or natural uh, being impotent. Look at the spiritual meaning for, first because there's more people spiritually blind than are naturally blind. Amen, there's right. more people that are spiritually deaf. They Amen. hear the natural, but they do not hear what the Spirit is saying. Right. There's more people uh, lame in the Spirit than they are in the natural. Amen, so he right. said, first of all, always look when you, look, when you hear those things. Always look, so he said, to open up their eyes. Because if anyone was blind spiritually, it was Saul. Amen. Yeah. Come on, you see what I'm saying? That you see change? Yes. Now, later on, well, I won't go there. I'll save it for another message. Yeah. Blind, blind. <laughs> okay, delivering from the to open up their eyes. That's number four. And number five, to turn them from darkness. To light. Amen. Now see, Amen. that's what you're hearing them saying is that when I see people's life change, uh, here's, uh, so uh, I want to give a scripture, okay? I, I want to make sure I communicate. Here he says, love not the world. Here he says, love not the world because that's sinking sand. When he said you build upon the foundation of sinking sand and one day it's all going to crumble and the word of God abides forever. So he says, in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, the last days, parable is significant times. I mean, the men shall be lovers of themselves, the lovers of pleasures, more than being lovers of God. Yes. See, when I, when I realized that sports was pleasures, mm -hmm. yes. <coughs> see, that could even yeah. be an idea right there. <coughs> yeah. Lovers of pleasures, lovers of self, more than being lovers of God. And John 3, 19 says this, This is the condemnation, let us come yes, into the yeah. world, Amen. But men love darkness. Men love darkness. See, they're not a victim of that light bulb. They're not falsely accused. They love. Yes. Samson loved Delilah. <coughs> yes. He's not a victim. He went falsely. He loved Delilah. Amen. Okay? He loved Delilah. Those people who love darkness. And when the light of God, God may use you to speak to someone who loves their sin. They love their darkness. They love their lie. Yes. And then they can become very angry. Here's the call. Here's the call of God. God's going to give him purpose. To change it from darkness to light. Okay? Now, what, what you're going to find, 
there are, there are some that will receive that message, there are some that love the darkness, there are some that look for a way out of the darkness, okay? That's what you're hearing today, that there are people that want to give up hope, they want to make, they were experiencing temporary things, they want to make a very permanent decision. Amen. But they, well, they got, God protected them, yes, God, God you, protected Jesus. them. Now, to open up their eyes, to turn them from darkness to light, so awesome. I mean, uh, how, many, how many would say, you know, that would really, that would be a good day. Yeah. That would really, that would really be a fulfilling day yes. to see someone turn from darkness to light. Amen. Number six, from the power of Satan Amen. to the power of God. Yes. Yes. There's, there's nothing that Satan can put upon you that, that has more power than God. God can break no matter what, what, what uh, is in anybody. From the power of Satan to the power of God. That they may, the next thing, number seven, that they may receive forgiveness of sins. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's back up just so keep things in perspective here. God said, I appear to thee for this purpose. I will give you purpose, and one of the purposes that they would be forgiven of their sin. Amen. That would not be what, just to see someone really saved, Amen. really saved, and, and their life totally changed. That, that you and I were that person out there one day, and God came to us and God forgave us. Yes. Number eight, so here, this is very important. This this is my title, and this is what the, the youth were saying in the Sunday school. Number eight, and inheritance, is it to get, that they may receive forgiveness of sins, but not just forgiveness of sins, but they might receive their inheritance. Yeah. In other words, their portion. Okay, we're going, to, we're going to try to describe that and define that for you before you leave here today. Okay, so God wants, so God then, who is He choosing? But someone that other people would not choose. Amen. Wow. Very important we understand, wow. and Rick Joyner says this in the trilogy over there, is that Rick Joyner says to the Lord, Oh, we're greatly on number. How are we going to get all the people that, that come against this army of the enemy, the host of hell, that are coming against us? And God says to Rick Joyner, We're going to get we're going to get those on the on the other team. We're going to get them saved. They're going to become part of the army of God. And that's how we're going to overcome yes. the host of hell. We're going, to get, we're going to change sides. We're going to go from darkness to light and from the devil to God. Okay? Okay, so if, if you really... Now understand, a lot of what we're saying today is homework. This is an assignment. That we can hear this, but if we don't pursue this, if we don't make the necessary change, then over and over again, God gives a word and that word is an assignment. So he's looking who is ready to come into alignment with the assignment. Okay, so I'm going to give you not only forgiveness of sins, but an inheritance with your portion among them that are sanctified by faith that is in me. Now here's what the young people are saying. Here's what Paul said, Saul, who's going to be made into Paul, verse 19. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. Okay, now, God will give you, God will show you things. God will show you where you are and where he wants to take you. Okay, so that when you when you see that, you understand that. And okay, for, for, uh, God said this to Moses. Okay, come now, therefore, and I'll send you to Pharaoh. Okay, that was the word that had the assignment. And so he stands back to see if Moses will come into alignment with the assignment. And when Moses says yes, I'll leave where I'm comfortable, where I have family. I have this burning bush experience. I'm a shepherd out here. I'll leave this and I'll go. I'll go. Uh, and deliver your people, God, when he says yes, the process begins. Amen. Okay, yes. And, that, and, and I, I've defined that before. Now, so here's here's what we don't want to do. And I, I want to I make sure I communicate well. Okay, so when, when God says something to every one of us, he's not impressed because we shout. Yeah. He's not impressed because we go amen. Yeah. He's not impressed because we have a Pentecostal spell. He wants to know. Yeah. Am I going to live this thing out? Yeah. 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 Now, fool, you can't scheme yeah. God. Right. Amen. You can't live God. God. Yeah. You can't fool God. Yeah. God is true that He doesn't dwell in lies. Yeah. Okay, so that whenever, whenever we come into that, so I will say this again, because see, it could be harmful to us to hear and not do. Yeah. Yeah. And a hireling doesn't care if you do. Hireling yeah. just wants you to come back. Amen. Yeah. Put money offering. Yes. But God is raising up shepherds or a remnant that's right. gonna that's not gonna fear man because they fear God. Right. And they're gonna preach the gospel with the chips fall with the man. Yeah. Now here's here's what here's what we every one of us need to understand. Because you want to be careful when God says forgive. And we go. 
Yeah, I'll think about it. Yeah, amen. It doesn't prosper you. Yeah, no. no. Unforgiveness doesn't hurt the person, it hurts you. Yeah, yes. Right. Yes. Okay, so when God says, today, if you hear His voice, do not harden your heart. As they did in the day of provocation, they provoke God to anger, departing from a living God because of the deceitfulness of sin. Yeah. Okay, when we hear words, and we refuse to come into assignment, and we choose the deceitfulness of sin over the truth of God, that the reason that bothers God because that brings trouble upon you and God loves you and He does not want harm to come to you. True, that's he true. does not want any harm or pain yes. or suffering. Well, he, well, here's what He knows: you're on a path that's going to cause yourself a whole lot of trouble. Yes. yes. <clears throat> trouble. Okay. Yes. Okay. Because we heard, but we said no. Right. Now, when you understand this, you're going to see people. And the little prophets of God, I can't believe this. <laughs> I don't know of anyone else. Anyone else ever so she pulls this out. When, when you understand, and I'm not talking that way, I'm saying that there are people come to church 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years and hear what they ought to do and can even say amen. But they never do. And, and you, know why, you know why they're dead and barren and untruthful? Because they harden their heart. Yep. Yes. And they have convinced themselves because of the deceitfulness of sin. That's it. I'm winning because I heard. I went to church. I put my body in this church building. But I will not let God in me. Wow. And one of the towels, both of them talked about who will be Lord. Amen. Yeah. Who, who, you will, Lord Jesus. who will really be in control? You Lord, no, now, it. Good. when you understand that God's thoughts are higher. Yes. Than our thoughts, and his ways are higher than our ways. Thank what you. We Jesus say, no. <laughs> we're, saying, we're saying, I'm asking for trouble. Yeah, okay. But because of the deceit, the secretness of sin, we think, we think we know more than God. Mm. So yeah. we cause ourselves more and more trouble, and you'll see people go round and round and round. That's what the, that's what that basically is talking about. And so with it, and there are people that convince themselves, I'm winning because I come, I went to church. $5 in the offering. Mm -hmm. God would be really grateful. Someone else had no, no money to put in the offering. They just gave God their heart. Yeah. Right. Yes. They gave God, yeah. gave God their life. Now they're seeking Him, having, having a penny. They had no money, but, they, but they, they're going, they're pursuing God. So Paul says, Oh, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient, I, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. Okay, let me get back. Let me get back to. Hebrews, because that's Hebrews 3, verse 7, to the end of the chapter, and it said they they did not enter in because of okay. okay. Then Hebrews 4, 2 says that the word preached did not profit them. Have you ever seen someone come to church for a long period of time? The word preached didn't profit them. Yeah. Yeah. The reason it didn't profit them because it was not mixed with faith but then that heard it. it. Yeah. It was not mixed with faith but then that heard it. We want to put everything upon the speaker. Well, like, I, I don't think he had that kind of anointing. Uh, <laughs> what well, well, people do, people will criticize. Yeah. They'll go to a dead church and say, I'm not going to serve God because the church is dead. Then they come to some place like this where he's alive. I, I, too, I don't believe in that. In other words, if it's alive or dead, they're still saying, I, I'm not. I don't like it. <laughs> yeah. They're going to find a suit because they still love their sin. They're not willing to give up their island. They're not willing. They're, not willing. they're are doing everything they can to avoid the cross. They don't mind coming to church, but they, they will avoid the cross. Many people have been to the church, but they've never been to the cross. They've never died to who they were before, and then they come up on the other side because they love the sin, they love the world, there's a whole bunch, they love a whole bunch of things, they, they love darkness, okay. Now, to explain this in a beautiful way, with something we use before, turn to Ephesians chapter 1. Now, for anybody that wants what God has for them, there are so much in this one chapter right here. Amen. I mean, there are, this is full of meat. Yes, Lord. It's very simple. Amen. Okay, this is uh, God speaking through, through uh, Paul the Apostle. Paul, and, and verse 1, chapter 1, verse 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, but the will of God to the saints of the Ephesus, to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace be to you, peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, here, now listen to what he says, okay? And remember, my title today is, uh, is purpose and inheritance. Now, in this chapter, you're going to see blessings and inheritance. This is very... Uh, what God wants us to do, 
He wants to change us from being barren to being fruitful. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, abide in this word, this word abide in, you can ask what you want. And so his God's will is that you become fruitful. Okay, so one of the worst messages that we ever want to send to the spirit realm, I've been in church thirty seven years and I'm still barren. You know, people are not going to walk what we have. Now listen to what Paul said by the Spirit of God. Verse 3. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us. Who has blessed us. See, when you realize you have been blessed, the Christian has the believer this has been written in. Verse 1. To It's been written to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Okay, so you have been, God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Amen. With all spiritual Amen. blessing Amen. in heavenly places, yes. according that he has chosen. He has chosen. You are chosen, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you would show forth the praises of God who had called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. That's first, uh, first Timothy yes, 2 9. Okay. Yes, okay, you have been chosen. Jesus. And the word chosen means you have been selected by choice. Amen. I'll say this again. Be careful if you've suffered. If you have had pain and you've been wounded and you have been abandoned, different kind of hurts and wounds, be careful because God not only will call you, He'll put a devil portion call upon you. You will just be saved. You will be just called. You will be chosen. He's blessed with all spiritual blessing. You have chosen. He has chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy. That we should be holy. When holiness becomes better than unholiness, yeah. there's a bit of freedom. Amen. But you've got to be clean and dirty. Amen. Amen. Yes, Amen. Lord. Yes, yes Father. Yes. You can you still come it. to church and be dirty. Yes. yes. But if you get washed and you come yes. to the cross, you'll be washed and be clean yes. and be clean yes. as better than being dirty. Yes, Father. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. That you may be holy without blame. Amen. You talk about freedom. Yes. That devil doesn't even have anything that we're using against you. Amen. Without blame. Yes. Yes. Without blame yes. before him in love. Having preordained us unto the adoption of children to Jesus Christ himself according to his the good good pleasure of his will. Okay, so basically what he's talking about is being granted in. So what that what that really saying. That you now are sons and daughters of God. Amen. I was impressed when the first little angel got up and she spoke this morning. <laughs> yes. She referred to God as Father. Yes. Yes. To the believer, there's no such thing as a fatherless person. No. God becomes your father, yes. and he will put you in a partner's will, and he'll shape you and mold you. You will become partaker of God's divine nature. Amen. You become Christ -like, and you will be filled and developed with the fruits of the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Lord, Hallelujah. Verse 6, to the praise and the glory of this race. <laughs> Now, see, some of this, we have to understand that some of this can be painful to some people because there's not only rejection, there's abandonment, there's hurts, there's wounds, there's all kind of abuse that can come in there. So we have to understand what God, was, what God is saying here. If you've suffered, if you've been pain, if you've been rejected, you've been wounded, then get ready because God, God's power will overcome everything that darkness can means will fill you with the light of God, the Spirit of God. Now, here's what he says in, in verse 6. To the praise of the glory of His grace, wherein He has made us accepted. Amen. In the beloved. Accepted. Yes. Did you experience rejection? You had to experience pain? But now you are so accepted, you can't remember the rejection. Because you are so accepted in the beloved that the truth of God is so much better than the lies. Being clean is so much better than being unclean. Being poor is better than being immoral. Being right before God is better than being damned by God. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Thank you, Jesus. We are now accepted in the beloved. So when you feel so accepted, you will need to find acceptance in the Lord in the arms of uh, a so-called lover. You are going to find acceptance in God who is love. Amen. You will avoid sin like the plague yeah. because being alive to God yeah. is so good. You can't, you don't want anything that's 
shook the life out of you. Yes. Because life is better than death. Yes. Amen. In whom, verse 7, in whom we have redemption, that means the ransom been paid in full, you and I owed a debt we couldn't pay. Yep. That's right. So Jesus paid it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you really understand that you sing, yes. you praise, yes. you worship, yes. here's the way of it. Someone who really understands that, well, sometimes there'll be, Pastor Bill, what is wrong with you? Why are you stopping the song service so quick? <laughs> <laughs> why is why is and they're trying to they're trying to one of the other people like why is Reverend Dry Eyes stopping the song service so quick? And that person they turn to is like, I don't know, I can't see because I'm crying, my eyes are so full. I can't see Reverend Dry Eyes because my eyes are so full of tears. <laughs> Same song service for someone else would be way too long. Yeah. Amen. See, because God would have the prices of his people. Thank Satan. You. See, Satan is attacking different people. Satan is trying to discredit the supernatural. Yes. Satan is trying to discredit the manifestations. Satan is trying to discredit deliverance. Yes. So his demons are stuck because Satan doesn't want to lose hold of you. Amen, that's right. So he will discredit your life to you. Amen. How can a Christian have an evil? Oh, we you can. Know, right away. 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 Satan, when you understand, Satan is not for you. He's against you. Yes, he is. And he doesn't want to lose control of you. Right. So God brings two little ones up. Woo! Praise God. Says, who will control you? Amen. Amen. Who will you get control? Yeah. Because it's real threatening to move past coming to church to getting saved. Yes. It's another big step from being just saved. Jesus being Lord of your life. Right. And you yes, give him Lord. control. Yes. 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 What you're admitting is, God, you're smarter than me. Thank, Thank you, Lord. 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 Yes. Lord. Lord. God. Lord. 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 Yes. Now we would say, that, yeah, God's smarter than me, but we won't give him control. Right. Take it all over to Jesus. We have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin, according to the riches of his grace. Whoa. I love to put it this way. It's the process, it's the journey that makes us spiritually rich. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God doesn't make holy men and women of God, apostles and prophets, in the lazy boy chair. He makes them through fiery furnaces, yeah. fighting them, losing yeah. his blood rings. I'm telling you, God is building the church, the gates of hell, we got permitted. I hope you had some problems recently. I hope some things can come against you because God is looking for people he can trust with trouble. towards us, verse 8. He has abandoned unto us with all wisdom and prudence, having made known, having, he has made known to us, he has made known unto us the mystery of his will. God has made known to us the mystery of his will. Yes. Oh, the mystery of his will to become like Jesus. Yes. Jesus was so obedient to Father, how obedient will well be to God? Wow. The mystery of His will. Wow, that's awesome. According to His good pleasure, which God had purposed in Himself, yeah. that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, He would done it together and put the all things in Christ that are upon heaven and which are upon earth, even in Him. That's Verse 11, very Lord. powerful. Verse 11, extremely oh. powerful. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance. Amen. Uh, right here we have a light green sheet I'm just going to say here's a uh, part of right here salvation the Holy Spirit healing deliverance compassion love joy peace gentleness kindness goodness patience self control faithfulness health energy prayer prosperity freedom vision angels praise worship life truth wisdom humility anointing 
miracles, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, hope, prophecy, the gift of prophecy, words of knowledge, social skills, parenting skills, sexual purity, restoration, a hedge of protection, open heaven, God's presence, your yes. life will have meaning, emotionally, yes. meaning, power for thoughts, power for sin, power for demons, power for sin, you will become joined of Christ, greater works that you should do than what he did, you walk yes. in the power that demonstrates the spirit, you have a wonderful marriage, you have godly children, you have intimacy with God, you have a career yes. job, you have education, you have a sound mind. Amen. 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 Oh, my God. That's just inheritance. The tip of the, uh, of the iceberg of yes. God's inheritance for you. Amen. What did God try to do? So See, God tried to bring all this to this, and we're fighting Him. How dare you, God, try to change my death to life? How dare you, God, try to change my bitterness to fruitfulness? Amen. Do it, Lord. Hang on, just hold on somewhere, okay? And who we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined, according predestined to the purpose of Him that worketh all and all things in the castle of His will, that we should be the praise of His glory, who first trusted in Christ, and whom you also trusted, after you heard the word of truth. Wow. Yes. Yes. Oh, we have time to get where I want to go. We have heard the word of truth. The truth will make you free. Amen. The question is not can we be free. The question is do we want to be free? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's truth, right. truth is a person and his name is Jesus. Yeah. You have heard the word of truth, the, the gospel of your salvation. And who has it that you will believe? After you believe, you are sealed. With the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purpose possession and to the praise of your glory. The, the word earnest means a pledge. A pledge that more will come. Yes. How many have some anointing? And how many want more? Yes. Yes. More, 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 I, I'm going to skip a little bit. I want to, let's go to uh, Exodus chapter 3. And be careful because this, this chapter is so powerful. I'll be here for a week. Now this is when the children of Israel are in bondage in uh, Egypt for 400 years. At the end of the chapter 2, they begin to sign and cry by reason of the bondage. At the same time, they begin to sigh and cry by reason of the bondage. God begins to deal with the deliverer on the backside of the desert. God gives them a burning bush experience. And we're going to pick up the story in verse 7. This is that burning bush experience. And I don't, I don't dare go to verse 1 and 2 because I'll be there for a while. Yeah. Verse 7. And God said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people that are Egypt. Egypt is the type of the world. Okay, And represents bondage. So God is saying to the deliverer, God is saying to the prophet, which is a type of the prophetic church, I have seen the affliction of my people. Yes. God, the, the devil doesn't want you to lift up your eyes and look up on the field, oh. see that the light is over, they're trying to get you focused about yourself. Yes. Okay? Okay, so he said, oh, yeah. I have seen the affliction of my people that are Egypt, type of the world, speaks represent by and I've heard their cry by reason of their oh. taskmaster, yeah. the drug dealer, the, the, the crack dealer, yeah. the, the gambling casino person, yes. the... The uh, yeah. bartender, these are taskmasters yeah. that bring you into bondage yeah. and into slavery yeah. and into captivity. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard their cry by reason of the taskmasters. I know their sorrow, and I have come down. I, God, have come down to deliver them out. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to say something. To, to me, it's extremely powerful. When people get this, this right here, this is so powerful. Because what we're going to see, so I don't think, what, what you're going to see is out of an into, not just out of. And die in the wilderness. It's in two. Okay, the wilderness between Egypt and the promised land is there by the divine sign. That's where God deals with self will, self idolatry, yes. and independent spirit of stubbornness. Yes. Many people die in the wilderness and never get to the promised land. They warm themselves by the Cape Verde, they talk about a land of milk and honey, and never get there. They enter not in because of unbelief. Many people don't get delivered because of unbelief. What do they say? I don't believe. That you'll ever just Yes. They enter not in because. I believe. We had several people come over here. They believe. Mm -hmm. Yes. Lord, yes. Man. Amen. When we get to heaven, Thank let's God talk Lord. to the gathering demoniac. He believes. <laughs> 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 uh, he believes. <laughs> now, I want, I want, I want, I'm not talking that. I want to say something. I cast out my first demon in 1975. 
Jesus is God's. Little did I know how many I would find in me. Amen, yeah. I cast out my first demon in 1975. I learned a couple things. I don't know. I know a couple things that delivered. I'm going to help people in this church understand deliverance. That you're going to see what God says. I'm going to bring some practical illustrations to you. That people's life. You hear the young person said, after I heard what the Spirit was saying through I thank God for deliverance. Yes. Deliverance sets you free from the internal warfare. Yes. When people yes, say, Lord. see, when, when someone said, I don't understand deliverance, but they're saying it, my mind, the natural mind cannot comprehend That's the right. Spirit. Amen. So God's going to help my mind. Yes, yes. thank you, Lord. will help me understand. Yes. See, if, if God would do all that for Saul, if we're a little naturally minded, yep. did you think God would help us? Yes. Yes. And so what you're going to see right here, and you, and you need to understand that everything that's been imparted to, to us through generations is going to be passed on to you. And, and what God is saying here is that this is your call to your generation. And if you understand that out of an NT, that that's why, see, if, if we become a spectator and not a participator, if we're not moving, you understand that God would give a word in the word, there will be an assignment. And when you say yes to, to the assignment, yes. th then you, you've got vision for your life and you have found yeah. your purpose. Yeah. And so now on your journey, it's the journey, it's the process that makes you rich, and you're, you're going to get your inheritance, yes. and what part of your inheritance is, let's just say it, probably to God. But no things about people that don't even know about themselves. Yeah. So when your heart is right, you can help other people. Yes, Whenever right. you see a heart of restoration, the heart the heart is not the cold on fire, yeah. the heart is yes. to bring the mercy of the love of God. Yes. Even sometimes you have to give a rebuke, but that what will happen, the promise will so override yeah. the rebuke. They will hear. Yeah, they, I heard the rebuke, but the, the, the promise, the promise. So, uh, it was so much more powerful than the rebuke yes, that yes. I could handle the rebuke. Yes, yes. I can I can deal with yeah. that little bit of stubbornness. I can I can give up that little thing that because what God has for me is so much bigger and so much better. Yes. Okay, so here's here what this is saying, okay? In verse seven, I heard their cry. Verse eight, I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptian and to bring them out of that land and into a land. Out of, into, out of, into, out of, into. I will bring them out of. See, you're, what you're seeing is restoration. You're seeing a picture of resurrection. You're seeing people coming out of bondage into freedom. And God is looking for a prophet, a prophetic church, a delivery church that will bring people that will deal with their own stuff so they can help people deal with their stuff. I'm going to bring them out of that land into a good land yes. and let the slide into a land flowing with milk and honey yes. unto the place of the king of the Hittite, the Amorites, the Pizzerites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. I'm going to bring them out of there and we'll bring them into. Yes. Verse 9, Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is coming to me. God saying, I have seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, Moses, and I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt, out of, into, out of Egypt to the Lord. promised land. And here, here's, we never quit because most people perish in the wilderness. They never quit. Mm -hmm. Okay, if only one person made it to the promised land, first of all, you've got to work out your own salvation up here in Trevor. You can get yourself there. Yes. And when you get the reason most can bring other people on bondage because he, he crossed that desert for himself. Mm -hmm. okay, when you go through something, God going to help you. Okay, now, uh, Exodus chapter 19. Wow. This is, uh, again, one of the most powerful chapters in the Bible. Exodus 19, this is uh, after they crossed the Red Sea. And... Um, and verse 1, the third month, when the children of Israel had gone out, the, gone out of the land, the same day they came to the wilderness of Sinai, and they departed from Rephidim. They come to the desert, come to the desert of Sinai, preach in the wilderness, and there Israel came between, before the mountain of God. And Moses went up into God, Moses went up to God, and God called to him out of the mountain, saying, Thus thou shalt say to the house of Jacob, Tell the children of Israel, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you upon eagles' wings, and by God, I brought you to myself. If you understand your inheritance, that God, you are God's inheritance, and God is your inheritance. That God has brought you to Himself, 
not to a bondage of a ministry or denomination or an organization or church or ministry or minister. You don't mention that body. God will bring you to Himself. Amen. That's right. So God said, I brought you to Myself. That's a big part of you. And in and when when you have God, then you've got your inheritance and your portion, and you have the favor and the provision and protection of God. Now, very important now. This is, we're getting in. This is our part, okay? And I will say this again. That today or any day, if you hear us, what you know, hard your hearts, they did, they did, in the day they provoked God to anger, departed from the living God because of the deceitfulness of sin. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> verse 5. Now, stop with that. Ten plagues, God brings them out of Egypt. They've been a bunch for 400 years, and the power of God. That Egypt, this, a great big stronghold upon two or three million people, got them in captivity, got them in bondage, got them in slavery, and God brings them out. And when Moses and Aaron went there and said, Let my people go, uh, Pharaoh said, I do, I do not know your God. And so things went from bad to worse. But then God brought them out in ten plagues. Okay, so sometimes we got to be patient. God will bring people out that we're praying for. We just yes. got to be patient, yes. and you'll see circumstances yes. begin to work in their life that, that you're praying for them, yes. and different things will happen. And God, God is God will deal with them like He dealt with Saul. So okay, awesome. so if he, if he got to pull the rug out from under me, he'll pull the rug out from me to get my attention. Now here's what he says in verse five. Understand, you don't make up your own rules. We don't come to God on your terms. Praise we God. come to God on, our, on His terms. Yes. Now therefore, verse 5, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then, and only then, shall you be a peculiar people unto me above all people, for the earth belongs to be God. Yes. Yes. If you obey my voice, keep my covenant, then... Oh, thank you, Lord. See, what we can't do is claim the promises of God without fulfilling the conditions. Yes. Right. Yes. Anybody, can anybody see the conditions? Yes. If you obey my voice, now hear my voice, we must hear and obey. We, if we become comfortable coming to the church and hearing and not obeying, you heard the young person said this morning, as soon as I walked in, when I was away from God, as soon as I walked in, I was convicted. Yes. Yes. No person convicted that person. It was the Spirit of God that convicted. Because God was saying, I want to bring you out of Egypt. I want to bring you out of your bondage. I want to bring you to life. I want to save you. I want to forgive you. I got a plan. I got a purpose. Where are you? I have an inheritance for you. And I don't want you to miss it. Yes. 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 Oh, thank you so much. So once you get saved, see. You want to be careful. Try not to scheme on God. Not try not to lie, because God is all about truth. Okay. So then, if you will obey my voice, anybody beside me ever heard God speak? Anybody beside me ever um, go something like this? Yes, God. I'll do that. I agree. Just not now. Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. And delayed obedience is disobedience. Yes, Lord. Yep. I, I repent, Lord. Boy. See, oh. we, can, we can try to manipulate God, but God will see through that. Yes, yeah. thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. Save us. Okay, so then you shall be, if we hear and we obey His voice, then, verse 6. <laughs> And only awesome. then shall you be unto me a, a kingdom of priests. That's awesome. And a holy nation. These are the words that thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Okay, hang on because we're going somewhere. Let's go back Jesus. to Acts chapter 26. Where we were where we were before, where we talked about Saul, uh, Saul becoming Paul. It's a Paul the apostle before King Agrippa. Now, can I just share a little bit of truth with you? Please. What I'm going to share now, I'm not, I'm not talking about anybody because i got my own stuff to deal with. Me too. Okay, now, we, earlier we turned to this Acts 26, and God has changed Saul, the Christian teller, the persecutor, to Paul the Apostle. 
And he just reiterated, he just told his story, he, he basically just gave his testimony and he gave it to King Agrippa. How many want something that will help, help you go on with God? Yes. yes. Okay. Please. Remember, I'm not Please. talking down to anybody. Believe me, I got my own homework. I'll give you yeah. an assignment right here during the song service today. Yeah. So, Paul tells this story, and at verse 21, chapter 26, <clears throat> so Paul tells this testimony, for these causes, the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to... There we yeah. Isn't it something how you read what you sow? Oh, oh, my goodness. That's <laughs> really cool. If you don't understand when you get in position, the, th the Bible says this, the thief comes but to steal. Yeah. And then, yeah. Okay, so when bad things begin to happen against you, why are we surprised? Right. So in the beginning, the reason we're surprised is that we can we don't see ourselves like Paul right. or Moses don't realize our real yeah. or Joshua, who yeah. are fill in the blank. We don't see ourselves like that. But see, we are, this present generation that God has, we yeah. are the church yes. on earth today. Yes. Okay, so then when the, same, when, it, it, when the same thing that happened to them begins happening to us, yes. in the beginning we're surprised, and then we get really like, this is real. Yes. This is so real. Okay, so what happens here mm -hmm. is that Paul says, I begin to, for this cause, turn people from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to the power of God. Oh, yes. The Jews tried to kill me. They called me at the temple. They tried to kill me. Therefore, having going to take the help of God, I can't do it. So basically, let's, let's go down to it. He preaches in verse 23 that Christ should suffer and be the first to rise from the dead that should show light to the people and to the Gentile. That's what God had told him. Verse 24, And as Paul thus spoke for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, you're crazy. Yeah. Paul said, the pastor says, your great learning has made you insane. You're crazy. And that's what people will say about you. Now, this is what he's saying. And then Paul said, I'm not crazy, almost noble Festus, but speak for I'm speaking the words of truth and of soberness. For the king, know, the king you know, they say, you know these Old Testament stories. You know, you've heard these stories. You know these things before whom I, I speak freely. I'm, I'm persuaded. I'm persuaded that none of these things are hid from him. And for this thing, with that, all these things were not done in the corner. King Agrippa, do you, don't you believe the prophet? I know that you believe. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Now look right here, because <coughs> every one of us need to understand what this is saying. First of all, for ourselves. <laughs> Secondly, you're going to see it in other people. Paul is preaching. The Jews tried to kill him. And he stands before the king here. And, and the king says, And Paul, you got such an anointing. You got such an anointing. You almost. You almost persuaded me. You. Now, I'm going to come in. I'm going to do something. I'm going to illustrate something, okay? I'm going to sit in the pew right here. What I'm saying is, people will come to church, and some will be speaking. The, the, the young people this morning, and we used to call it, we used to call it white knucklers. And and the basement of our house, we have people would hold, people would hold on to the chairs, and they would hold on so tight that the blood would circle. We call it white knucklers. <laughs> yeah. and somebody would go, Oh my God, that was a white knuckler. I was hoping, and see what I'm telling you. This is this is true. Yeah. What I'm saying, there were people come to church. Who have no intention of going any further, giving up their sin in the darkness, and they hold on to the pew, they hold on to the pew. and they hold on so tight. You, oh my God, God, Paul, your your message is so amazing, it's so powerful. You almost, you almost hurt, but I managed to hold on to my sin. I made it. Oh, oh, I was so convicted. Oh my God, the truth that you were preaching was exposing my life. The truth that what you were preaching, uh, oh it. It was exposed to the death of me. I know. How dare you, God, try to bring me. Oh, you know, almost. Yeah. It was so hard to walk out with my sin. No. You almost first oh, right. But I, I really had to focus. Wow. The love of God was so strong. It was hard for me to hate him until oh. I lost. Amen. 
Amen. It's true. I left one of my patients the paper that says, so I do this by, I do this by memory. Here's what basically people are saying. God, how dare you? How dare you try to come in my bondage and bring freedom? You almost persuaded me to come out of my sickness and the health. You almost persuaded me to come out of my light to truth. You almost persuaded me to come out of darkness and the light. You almost persuaded me to come out of hell for heaven. You almost, you almost, oh, I had to focus. You almost, you almost talked me out of giving up my demons for the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Amen. You almost persuaded me to give up death for life. You almost, you I really had to focus to keep a hold of my depression rather than get joy. It was hard. You, I, you almost persuaded me to give up, to give up the world for the kingdom of heaven. You almost persuaded the conviction was too strong, the love of God, the spirit of God was too powerful. You almost, but I've learned how to hold on, harden my heart of becoming expert. You almost it was close, but I managed. You almost persuaded me to give up the devil for Jesus. But I focused real hard. And I managed. That's what the king is saying to Paul. You yeah. almost. Yeah. You'll see people and believe it or not, David, Pastor David and I was talking one day, and I had witnessed to a guy in Kirksville, Missouri, who was in a he, he, he was a professional college student. He had something like 12, 18 degrees. Wow. And when he was in a band, so he goes to college because he was in a band and a lot of young girls wow. were attracted to a musician. So he just kept going from degree to degree to degree to stay around the girls. <coughs> and God brought me together with him. And he told me, you almost Nobody's ever brought such truth to me like you have, Bill. You almost. But I thought about my band and I could go to school and I could be around these young girls and tell them I'm in a band, they come to the band, then I could. Which just brings me to another thing. If we don't understand what God is doing in our, in our Praise and worship in our song services right now. I know Chris will remember this. I don't know. Do you remember I played the uh, cassette that Thou Does Not Bow Low Enough? Yeah. That mm -hmm. I tried to go through the yeah, eye of the needle. Mm -hmm. I tried to get through the side needle, but I've got my books. Yes. I got my instruments mm -hmm. of music. And I could not get through that silly little gate carrying all these things. If we don't understand what God has done to us, Amen. to play instruments, because we learned how to hide behind our instruments and our identity is what we do rather than who we are. Amen. We get attention for what we do and God has stripped us of our instruments. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. What do I have when I stand flat foot naked before God? Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes, take it all, Lord. Christ. We are Christ. We can hide behind the rest and think we're I'm doing something for God. Yeah. I'm playing an instrument but I'm ignoring God. Let me just, if, if, we're going, if we're going to go on with God, if we want a real awakening, if we want the holiness of God, if we want real anointing with God, we need to understand that we, we want to get away from feeling comfortable coming to the church and hearing what we ought to do and not doing it. So I just want to just, I'm not talking to anybody. 
I'm, I'm, I just want to say that a few things that are in scriptures. There are certain things that God tells us to do. One of them would be, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Yes, Lord. So, I would ask myself, how many years have I come to church and I'm seeking first the kingdom of God? They enter not in because of do I do I hunger and thirst for righteousness? Now I'm I want you to understand I'm not talking down to anybody. I'm evaluating myself in the mirror of God's word. Yes, Lord. And if we I'm trying my best not to be a hireling. I'm trying to be a real shepherd. Yes. And to be a shepherd I gotta allow God to deal with me. Yes. I've got to allow God to deal with my stuff. When I'm allowing God to be with my stuff, I'm not talking down to you. So I'm not talking down to you. I'm just saying, see, every one of us, right, what, what God has for every one of us right here is destiny, purpose, yes. inheritance, yes. vision. Your life will be so meaningful. You will be so fulfilled, so satisfied. If we do this in God's way, what I'm saying is you can't stick your toe in the water and think you're going to be spiritually fulfilled. Amen. Right. Yes. And you can't even go in ankle deep and be fulfilled. That's you can't right. go in knee deep and be fulfilled. Right. You can't go in waist deep and be fulfilled. You've got to get in water over your head. Yes. And what that speaks yes. of prophetically, you've got to give up control right. and get in the flow yes. of God's river where you're out of control and now the flow of God's river is taking you where He wants yes. you to be. Yes, yes Lord. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. That's Ezekiel. I think 47. Okay. Now, you ever had something happen to you and you remember you cried from belly and complained and said, put in the garment of praise for the Spirit? Yes. yes. Love not the world for all. Why does God say love not the world? Because everything in the world will perish. Yes. Yeah, for real. So he's not trying to withhold something good for you. Yeah, and let me just put it this way. See, premarital sex causes jealousy in marriage. Yeah, so when God says don't yeah. have premarital sex, he said, I want to save you. I want to save you from bitter divorces. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And all the domino effect of habits of that. Yeah. Yeah. Forgive or you're not forgiven. Pray without ceasing. Yes. And I evaluate how many messages have I heard on prayer. Mm -hmm. Meditate upon my work day and night. Nice. Nice. And see, we could be right here, we could say amen, not even be reading our Bible. Yes. yes. See, this this is what I'm it's just something that, you know. Forgive me if I'm getting on your nerves, but this is so good to me. God will give a word, and that word goes an assignment. Meditate upon the word day and night, and you shall succeed, you shall prosper. Why are some people not succeeding and prospering? Because they're not. Amen. So they enter not in because of unbelief. See, see, the Holy Spirit's just been gentle with us. It's just evaluating. God's trying to save us from hell, from bondage, from sickness, from disease, yes. from poverty. The first angel was talking about God wants to out of the poverty and the prosperity. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Sister Miller preached a message oh, how many years ago she said there's some people they love, they love their poverty, they embrace the change of poverty, and they will make the choices they need to make to come out of poverty. Okay, perfect and you get the tuning because we we'll come to a landing here for too much longer. Draw nigh to me and I'll draw nigh to you. Amen. Overcome evil with good. Study to show yourself approved. The just shall live by faith. Yes. Cares of this world, the seek the lesser riches, the lesser thing coming and choke the word, the person becomes unfruitful. Do not forsake the assembling of the saints together. Flee fornication. Whoever looks upon a woman who left at the herd has committed adultery in his heart. Oh, yes. Woe to them that are east in Zion. Redeem the time for the days of evil.
script, they get the God within you. If any man will come back to me, let him deny himself come, yes. and take up his cross and come and follow me. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Yes. Faith without works. It's dead. Does that tell you why so many people are dead? They hear but never do. The two greatest commandments, love God with all of your heart, soul, strength, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Do you believe that, um, okay, for those of, you with the, those of you with the Thompson chain, turn to 1608. We're going to come in for landing in just a little bit. But I... Uh, uh, this is a this is a teaching moment in the spirit of God loving and gently. This thing about uh, when Paul was before the king, the king said, You almost persuaded me. That was that was the most powerful message I've ever heard. Yeah. Yeah. You almost persuaded me. I had to really focus, I had to really concentrate yeah. Yeah. upon not getting saved. It was hard. Okay now. I'm just going to just real quick to share just a little bit here. And, and we need to take this to any time that any of us are anywhere and God speaks to us, God deal with us. Um, okay, the first, I'll just give the scripture reference. I'll turn to this because I'm going to move too fast. Isaiah 63.10, but they rebelled and vexed His Holy Spirit. We can vex the Holy Spirit. How? By God, God saying, do ABC, and we not do ABC. They rebelled and they vexed His Holy Spirit. Therefore, He was turned the, to be their enemy and began to fight against Him. See, when, when we begin to take a journey away from truth into a lie that will bring destruction, God will create problems to bring yes. us back into alignment with yes. truth yes. that will bring us back into blessing because yeah. down this trail was cursed. So they rebelled and vexed His Holy Spirit. The word vex means to make, to make sorrow, it means to displease and anger to cause the Holy Spirit pain. Yes. You realize that that if I disobey God, I can I can cause pain to the Holy Spirit. Yes. That He loves you that much. See, uh, can't your children that you love cause you pain? Yes. Yeah. Because you know that they make decisions cause them a whole lot of trouble. Yes. So that's yeah. the pain. Yes. See, that's the pain. That's what the Holy Spirit. The Holy yes. Spirit can feel pain. When we vex the Holy Spirit, we're making Him sorry. We're causing Him pain. We're displeasing him. Mark 3, 29. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Spirit uh, hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. Okay, Acts 5, 3 said, but uh, Peter said, Peter said, and in eyes why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? And keep back part of the price of the land. And you beside me ever lied mm -hmm. yes. to God? Yes. Mm -hmm. I love you, God. <laughs> if you love me, keep it. <laughs> Ephesians 4.30 Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God The word grieve means Don't cause the Holy Spirit distress Don't make Him sad Don't make the Holy Spirit sorrowful Can you imagine I want to save you from trouble How dare you God Try to save you from trouble How dare you God Try to get me out of this sickness and out of this. How dare you God Try to get me out of these curses And get me in the blessings the Holy Spirit of God. In First Thessalonians five nineteen it says, "Quench not yes, amen. the Holy Spirit." The word "quench" mean extinguish, put the fire out. Mm -hmm. And then Acts seven fifty one says, talks about resisting the Holy Spirit. The word "resist" means to strive against, means to oppose the Holy Spirit. Yes. Anytime God brings us truth about ourselves and we resist that truth to stay in agreement with the lie. Yes. We're resisting the Holy Spirit. Who will tell other people that we love? Right. And when we can tell other people, you need to come to our church where the Spirit can move. And when He moves upon me, I'm resisting. Mm. Yes. Wow. Anybody beside me ever felt more comfortable telling other people about their stuff than... Yes. <laughs> okay, turn to John 6 and I'll try to come in from in. When I read this, this, this shocked me. John chapter 6. <coughs> huh? 
How many, uh, see a lot of people try to make God out to be some wimp, some sissy, some pansy. How many know that Jesus can get truth? Yes, yes. thank you, okay. Jesus. Now be careful hanging around the real Jesus because you fall in love with truth. Yes. And when you see what helps us, you and I fall in love with truth. God gives us truth, and we receive it, even though in the beginning yes. we might be offended. But when we come into life, we are so much better, Amen. we're so much happier, fulfilled, or healthy, we're fulfilled. We got our financial prosperity. We we got the fruits of the Holy Spirit. We're so happy. Oh God, why didn't I do this sooner? Okay, so let me just we'll, we'll try to come in for landing. So we'll be okay. In John chapter four, I'm sorry, I'm sorry John chapter six. Let's begin at verse 24. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they they got in a boat, they came shipping, they came to Capernaum seeking for Jesus. Awesome. Well, That's journey, right. And they're trying to find Jesus. <coughs> and when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? One place, to the other side to find Jesus. They're seeking Jesus. When did you come here, Jesus? Now listen to what Jesus says. And the reason I'm saying this, there will be times with love, with gentleness, you and I are going to have to, if you begin receiving truth about yourself, you will so fall in love with truth because you're going to realize truth is good medicine for us. Yes. Yes. Amen. It is so good for you Lord. and I yes. that you become comfortable giving it to other people with love and gentleness. Yes. <coughs> These people come to Jesus. And they come to Jesus. When did you come here? Now listen to what Jesus says. Verse 26. <coughs> verily, verily, I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the mini the miracles, but because you ate of the food. Hmm. Did Jesus know the real motive? Of course. Yes. yes. They're at one place, and they come where Jesus is. They said they're seeking Jesus. They went from one side to the other side, and they came seeking Jesus. And Jesus turned and they said, When did you come here, Lord? And Jesus said, You seek me not because you saw the miracles, but because you did eat of the loaves. <coughs> and you were filled. <gasps> Here's what God would do with me. Here's what God did there. Here's what God be careful, because he might do this with one or two of you. If he sees an impure motive, yes. he wants to help me. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Here's how I grow. God will show me impure motives. Yes. Change them into pure. Yes. So that you understand what this is about. Look at verse 2 in the same chapter. <coughs> A great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles, Amen. which he was doing upon them that were diseased. Was the was miracle working power of God in operation? Yes. yes. Some people, they come back. Jesus is gone. Where's he at? He'll be on the other side. Some people come. And Jesus said to them, who came seeking for Jesus, Jesus said, you seek me not because you saw the miracles, because you ate the loaves and were filled. Yes. <laughs> Does God know if any of us ever come to him or the church with impure motives? Yes. Mm. But if we come with impure motives, we don't get eliminated. Amen. He'll help us change the impure motives. Praise God. Pure motives. And yes. impure. But we don't want to be like Ananias and Sapphira Ooh. and lie. Amen. It didn't work. No. Okay. Lying to self and self deception does not work. Remember, you're in and out. Um, today, if you hear his, his voice in the heart of your heart, as they did, they, they provoke God to anger, departing from the living God because of the deceitfulness of sin. In other words, I'm still in control. I'm not going to give up control. I'll come where God is, but I don't want this miracle working power to work in me. He saw 
gave up his inheritance for a bowl of soup. I don't know if anybody's ever came here, not because of the miracles, but because of soup. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure it happened. When I saw that, I'm going, are you kidding me? <clears throat> Jesus would turn around to someone and say, so awesome. You came to me not because you want miracle working power of God. You came because of the food. Mm -hmm. Then he goes on and he gives them the answer. And <clears throat> what you'll see is sometimes God will give a little bit of rebuke and it tells you a promise that is so overcome the little bit of rebuke Thank you, Lord. that you'll be able to well, the promise will anesthetize the rebuke Thank so Lord that you Jesus. can give up that that's causing trouble because God yes. has something old. now here's what he says labor not for the meat that perishes yes, amen. but for the meat that endureth <laughs> and the everlasting life yes. which the son of man shall give unto you for him hath God the Father sealed. Then they said to him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? What shall we do? What can we do? Give me ABC. Give me, give me, ten, th give me ten things. Give me an assignment. Here's what is, what is the work? What can we do that we might work the works of God? And Jesus turned to them and said, This is the work of God that you might believe. That you might, that you might believe. They entered not in because of unbelief. Here's the worst of God. If you believe, they entered not in because of unbelief. Well, I don't know about the gifts. I don't know about healing. I don't know about prophecy. I don't know about deliverance. They entered not in because of unbelief. What can we do that we might believe? This is the worst of God that you might believe. And remember, we're talking about purpose and inheritance. Yes. Get the into the end. To me, this is so powerful. So, so powerful. This is the work of God that you believe. I'm going to skip down to verse 30, 32. Jesus answered said, that verily, verily, Lord, who gave you that bread from heaven, but my Father give you the true bread from heaven, for the bread of God is He. Yes, certainly is. The bread of God is He, yes. which come down from heaven, and give it life yes. to the world. Jesus is the bread of life. When we have the real Jesus and not religion, Amen. when we don't just come to church, but we have been to the cross, the old man has been buried, we're on the other side resurrected, and now we are still alive in God because we have found our inheritance. The bread of heaven is Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Stop right there. It's a message to bring us into fullness. It's not a preaching excitement message. It's a 